Good evening and welcome to another episode of Courts Today by Live Law. This is your host Urvashi Chauhan bringing you the latest updates on the legal front. This is your go-to source for all things legal. Let us start. Starting with the update from the Constitution Bench hearing the case relating to the minority status of Aligarh Muslim University. The bench comprises CJI Chandra Chud and Justices Sanjeev Khanna, Surya Kant, JB Pardewala, Dipankar Datta, Manoj Mishra and Satish Chandra Sharma. Today, the petitioners presented their rejoinder arguments. Senior Advocate Rajiv Dhawan examined the AMU statute to understand the supervisory responsibilities of the law director and the regulations pertaining to the university officers. The law director, let me tell you, typically is the third highest ranking official, usually presides over the university court, which functions as an administrative body. Dhawan pointed out today that according to the provisions of the Act, while the Governor General had overriding powers in the Imperial Statute, it does not diminish the authority of the court, whether as a proposing body or in other capacities. Senior Advocate Kapil Sibyl in further discussion emphasized that Article 30 of the Constitution of India grants the right to administer an institution, which involves the freedom to choose the method of administration. Sibyl pointed out that no minority institution in the country is actually administered by minorities. He argued that assessing whether the minority is administering the institution or not was not a proper criterion as it would exclude virtually all minority institutions. After hearing the arguments from both sides for eight days, the bench has today reserved the judgment in the matter. Stay tuned with us for the verdict. As you know that the Varanasi district judge had yesterday allowed Hindus to perform prayers inside one of the sealed cellars inside the existing Gyan Vapi mosque complex. Few hours after the order was passed, the mosque committee filed an urgent application seeking status quo at the mosque site. The application was moved as an interlocutory application in a pending SLP filed by the committee challenging Varanasi Court's 2022 order which had allowed appointment of a court commissioner to inspect the mosque. Yesterday night, the lawyers of the mosque committee approached the residence of a Supreme Court registrar seeking an urgent hearing at night itself, raising the apprehension that pujas would be performed inside the mosque during the night. The registrar replied that he would inform after taking instructions from the Chief Justice of India. This morning, the registrar telephonically conveyed to the mosque committee the message from the Chief Justice of India that they would have to approach the Allahabad High Court with their application. In the application, the committee had contended that the administration was acting in hot haste soon after the Varanasi court's order to allow the puja at night itself and that these actions occurring in the middle of the night were aimed to preempt any legal action by the mosque managing committee. Let me tell you, last August, the Supreme Court had allowed the Archaeological Survey of India, that is ASI, to conduct the survey of the mosque premises, excluding the Vazukhana area where a shivling was purported to have been found. The ASI's report, which was made public recently, states that a large Hindu temple existed before the construction of the Gyan Vapi Mosque. As per the last update, the Mosque Committee has today approached the Allahabad High Court against this Varanasi Court's order allowing puja in the Vyas Tehkhana. Former Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Soren was arrested yesterday after the Enforcement Directorate took him into custody in a money laundering case linked to an alleged land scam. He was questioned for over six hours by the ED yesterday. After this, he resigned as the Chief Minister and was subsequently arrested in the late evening. He had submitted his resignation to the State Governor before the arrest took place. The Jharkhand High Court today heard the petition filed by Sorain challenging his arrest. A division bench consisting of Acting Chief Justice Shri Chandra Shekhar and Justice Anubha Rawat Chaudhary heard the matter today. During the hearing, Sorain's counsel requested the court to list the matter at 12 p.m. today, citing recent developments that needed to be brought on record. 
However, the court declined the request and adjourned the matter to tomorrow. The court also took note of the mentioning slip tendered to the Registrar General yesterday evening. The slip revealed that Soren's lawyer had informed about an imminent arrest and had asked for urgent listing of the writ petition on the list and that the Enforcement Directorate's counsel was not notified about this mention before the Registrar General for urgent listing. In a related development, Sorain moved the Supreme Court challenging ED's arrest. After the petition was mentioned this morning for urgent listing, Chief Justice of India D.Y. Chandrachud agreed to hear the matter tomorrow. Senior Advocate Kapil Sibyl, appearing on behalf of Sorain, undertook to withdraw the petition filed before the High Court. And now an update on the controversy around the Chandigarh mayoral elections. Aam Admi Party councillor Kuldeep Kumar has filed an SLP before the Supreme Court challenging refusal of the Punjab and Haryana High Court to stay the Chandigarh mayor polls. He had moved the High Court alleging vote tampering in the Chandigarh mayor elections where the Bharatiya Janata Party candidate emerged victorious earlier this week. The BJP candidate secured 16 votes against the 12 votes received by Kuldeep Kumar who is the candidate backed by Congress and Aam Admi Party. The presiding officer rejected eight votes as invalid. Before the High Court, Kumar had sought setting aside of the impugned election result as the same allegedly was a result of complete fraud and forgery laid upon the democratic process. He further prayed for holding of fresh elections in a free and fair manner under the supervision of a retired High Court judge. Yesterday, the High Court did issue notice in the petition but had denied the prayer to dissolve the functioning of the office until further orders. Aggrieved by the same, the SLP has been filed. The Karnataka High Court has refused relief to a landowner who challenged the bank auction sale of his land on failure to repay the loan nine years after the sale took place. The petitioner had taken a loan from the Punjab National Bank in 2008. On default in payments, the bank initiated proceedings under the Surfacy Act and the property was sold in September 2014. The petitioner's challenge to the auction sale was rejected by the Debts Recovery Tribunal in May 2015, which was not challenged further. The petitioner started corresponding with the bank seeking information about the auction. After a gap of six years, the bank communicated the sale certificate, following which the petitioner approached the court. He contended that the bank never disclosed as to when the sale took place and who was the successful bidder and only when the sale certificate was communicated, he came to know that the property was sold. He even claimed to be in possession of the property. The bank opposed the plea saying that the petitioner at all times was aware that his property was being sold. The bench on going through the records also noted that the petitioner was fully aware of the sale notice issued in the year 2014 and he had challenged it before the DRT. A single judge bench of Justice M. Nag Prasanna while dismissing the petition expressed shock about how an individual undergoing legal proceedings concerning their property could remain silent for nine years and then suddenly approach the court claiming ignorance about the events affecting their property. In another update, the Kerala High Court today made it clear that police officers were answerable to the public and any inappropriate conduct on their part would not be accepted or tolerated. Justice Devan Ramchandran said so in connection with the recent incident in Alathur police station in the Palaka district where a police officer used abusive vocatives against an advocate. In the last hearing, the court had directed the state police chief to ensure civilized police behaviour. It had directed the state police chief to issue additional circular for ensuring refined and sophisticated behaviour from the police officer and for prevention of usage of abusive words against citizens. The court found that at least 10 circulars had been issued since 1965 and still incidents like this kept happening in the state. Today, the court was informed by the state police chief that an additional circular had now been issued for ensuring appropriate behaviour from police officers towards the citizens. A Delhi court has sentenced a man to four years of rigorous imprisonment in a case concerning the 2020 North East Delhi riots, observing that the crimes committed by him were based on hatred and greed. 
Noora, along with Nabi Muhammad, was convicted earlier this month in offences punishable under IPC. Noora was convicted for being member of a writer's mob which vandalized and set on fire various shops, robbed some individuals and violated prohibitory order passed by the police. Nabi Muhammad was convicted for robbery of mobile phones from two individuals. While Noora was sentenced to four years in prison, Nabi Muhammad was sentenced to imprisonment already undergone by him in the case. The additional sessions judge Pulatsya Pramachala of Karkar Duma Courts said that both the convicts had been in low income group of the society and though the crime committed was not a lighter one but lack of education, influence of mob sentiments, unsettled life and given their family background could not be overlooked. And lastly, a plea has been filed in the Telangana High Court challenging a government order providing free travel on public transport exclusive to females including transgenders in the Telangana state through the Telangana Road Transport Corporation. The petitioner argues that this order exceeds the authority granted by the Road Transport Corporation Act and violates Article 15 of the Constitution. According to the petitioner, the corporation has overstepped its jurisdiction and its power is derived from the Road Transport Act of 1950 and only the central government has the authority to make laws under this act. The petitioner highlights that the corporation is meant to provide efficient, adequate, economical and well-coordinated transport for profit as outlined in Section 22 of the Act and this has been contradicted by the government order. Additionally, it is argued that offering free services to only a specific section of society is discriminatory considering the corporation operates a variety of buses and services ranging from economical to extra luxury. The petition was placed before the division bench of Chief Justice Alok Aradhe and Justice Anil Kumar Jukanti, which directed the registry to register the petition as a writ since the petitioner had admitted to being personally aggrieved by the government order. Thank you for watching. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.